viruses and hackware and stuff like that, it's a constant threat. In the database, the biggest threat is SQL injection. How does that apply to analytics? Watch the next video to find out. These are short two minute sessions designed to help you solve real problems, not just wander through the syntax. In this session, we're looking at more classical problems made simple by the use of analytics. As Einstein told us, imagination is more important than knowledge. So we can apply analytics to all sorts of situations. Today's classic problem is how to treat a string as actually a set of values. It's equivalent to in-list processing. Let's say I have a website page that has an input field for account numbers. So in this case, I can type in a list like that with the intent being I'm actually entering three separate account numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine. If I want to do a query out of that to take that field on the screen, I could easily put it into an SQL using the concatenation operator in the language of my choice. In this case, I'm using the plus sign from Java. That would be a really, really bad idea. All you need to do is Google for SQL injection and discover what a bad idea that would be. Because if my website looks like this, all some malicious person has to do is type in something like this to effectively force an SQL that you didn't want into your system and that's the end of your database. We've just dropped the most important table. What we want to do is use a bind variable. But if you try to put in multiple values into a bind variable, the database doesn't know that's three separate variables, you'll get an error in valid number. What we want to do is somehow take that string and separate it out into its constituent values. So the query ends up looking something like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, as three separate values, or in the more generic case, for a provided list of items, we want to select each one with an inline query. How do we do it? Well, analytics might be useful here. First we need to do is obviously find the commas, because that's the delineation point for each of our items. Let's use a SQL plus variable using colon account. We can find the commas using a little bit of trickery with the dual table. We can see we've got four, eight, and 12, 12 being nominally one character after the end of the string, which will let us find the very last item in our list. Once we've got that, I can start to see a bit of a pattern emerging on what substring commands we need to use to find the values. From zero to four, plus one and minus one gives us the first term. From four to eight, once again, plus one and minus one, gives us the next term. And from eight to 12, plus one, minus one, etc. Using the comma location and its previous one helps us find the items in question. And when we hear the word previous, we start thinking lead and lag. Let's take that query we just ran to find the comma location, put in a substring command using lag and the current value of the comma location, and we can easily turn that list as a string into a list as rows. Once we have it as rows, we simply can use that and plug it into our query from the accounts table to get the accounts in question. There's no SQL injection possibility there, and effectively we're using bind variables because there's no literals in our SQL statement. You can run these queries yourself by clicking on the live SQL link below. In the next session, we'll look at more classical problems made simple through the use of analytics. Thanks very much for watching, and don't forget to keep it simple with SQL. We'll see you all again soon.